Here we have our beam with a single UDL of 20 kilonewtons per meter. We have previously worked out our reactions, BA to be 30 kilonewtons, BB to be 30 kilonewtons as well. Now we're going to draw the first of our two diagrams, the first one being the shear force diagram. For that, we're going to draw in some construction lines. Namely, in this case, at the start and at the end of the beam, and draw in a horizontal line to denote zero kilonewtons. So we'll label this our shear force diagram. The units are going to be in kilonewtons. Our horizontal line represents zero kilonewtons. To draw the shear force diagram we're going to start at the left hand side of the beam and gradually reveal the beam plotting the various points denoting the total force up to a particular point. Starting on the left hand side the move or reveal the first support VA uh, it's a value of 30 kilonewtons, pointing upwards. So on your shear force diagram, it will go up to a value of 30 on your shear force diagram. As you move across the beam, for every meter you go across, you're going to drop 20 kilonewtons. Keep going across. For every meter dropping 20 and we're going to look at the essentially the end of the beam here we have uh, the total amount of the udl 20 kilonewtons uh, per meter three meters so that will be a force downwards of 60 kilonewtons the resultant force we have just at the end of the beam will be up 30 through the reaction down 60 due to the udl times 3 and that should give you at a value of negative 30 and it should plot at a point roughly about here reveal the last reaction VB pointing upwards and that will you know, use that to close off your shear force diagram back to zero. Your shear force diagram should start at zero and end at zero. We now have two points, one on the left hand side and one on the right hand side. 30 on the left, negative 30 on the right. And to join the two dots with whenever you have a UDL, we know that we should use a diagonal line. The gradient of that diagonal line will be the rate of the UDL, which will be 20 kilonewtons per meter. And that is our shear force diagram drawn. Next to draw the bend moment diagram, we're going to use the areas on our shear force diagram to help us plot points on our bend moment diagram. We essentially have two areas, two triangular areas, and we're going to work out the area for both of these triangles. First, what we need to do is to work, o work out where the crossover point is on the shear force diagram. That can be easily done by taking your starting point here, a value of 30, 
and dividing that by the rate of the UDL, which you can see at the top of the screen is 20 kilonewtons per meter. 30 divided by 20 gives you 1.5, hence the distance along on the x-axis to the end of the triangle is 1.5 meters. Now we can work out the area of our triangle. Area is going to be a half the base times the height. It's going to be a half times 1.5 times 30. And that gives you 22.5. Our green area here is 22.5 and the units for that will be kilonewton meters. Similarly for the blue area, the area in that case is again a half the base times the height. So it's going to be a half times 1.5 also. The beam is 3 meters in length. So both the dimensions for the base of the triangles will be 1.5 meters. The height, in this case, negative 30, and that should give you an area of minus 22.5. Again, minus 22.5, the area is below th beneath the x-axis and hence it is a negative area. To draw the bend moment diagram, we're going to draw some more construction lines. Draw construction lines at the start and the end of the beam, and in this case, also at that crossover point on the shear force diagram. And we'll draw in a zero axes as well. This will be our bend and moment diagram. The units given in kilonewton meters. Our horizontal line represents where a zero bend and moment exists. To draw points on our and a moment diagram we're going to consider the area on the shear force diagram at the start of the shear force diagram we have zero area enclosed therefore we have a zero point at the middle of the shear force diagram the total area we have is given by the green triangular area 22.5 Can plot that as a point on our bend moment diagram then at the end of the beam adding together the areas we have on the shear force diagram gives us a total of 22.5 plus the negative 22.5 gives us a total area of zero we now have our points plotted on the bend moment diagram now we need to consider the value of the shear force at various points to be able to join the point together on our bend moment diagram. At the start of our shear force diagram, the shear force value is a value of 30. So the tangent at that point is a positive value heading upwards with a value of zero or 30. Considering the shear force value in the middle of the beam, the shear force value is a value of zero. So the tangent, the gradient, instantaneous gradient at that point will be a flat line, zero gradient. Then looking at the gradient or the shear force value we have at the end of the beam, minus 30. So that tells us we have the tangent 
to the curve, that point gives us a negative gradient going downhill. The three tangents that I've drawn in will then help us to draw in a line that can connect the three points with tangents or gradients uh, with 30 to start off with, then 0 and negative 30 to finish off. Doing that and we should end up with a curve. We have a curve because as we go along the shear force diagram, the shear force value is continuously changing. Therefore, the tangents or gradients continuously change down to value of zero. And as we pass the midpoint on the beam, they go negative. Therefore, the curve curves downwards. That is our bend a moment diagram drawn. Points to note. is that our bend a moment maximum value is a value of 22.5 kilonewton meters at a point 1.5 meters from the left hand side or right hand side. For this bend a moment diagram There are no points of contraflexure.